So here's four things, and I think that made the difference between Joseph and the prodigal that we need to be teaching our children, our grandchildren, and that we need to be teaching ourselves to have in our everyday lives. Number one, I think Joseph had a healthy respect for human authority. I don't care if you don't like your boss. I don't care if you don't like a certain person. If God has placed them in authority over you, we still need to have respect for that human authority. You think Peter wanted to go eat lunch with the emperor? Come on, emperor, let's get together and talk. No, the emperor is literally having Christians crucified. And Peter's telling us, still have a respect for the human authority that God has placed in your life. Number two, I think Joseph had a respect for human relationships. He obviously respected his dad. He respected his family. He forgave his brothers. He could have had them killed. He said, no, this is family. And even though we've disagreed at times, I'm still going to show respect for them because they're family. We have a human relationship. Your parents. We need to respect our parents. That's a biblical thing with the promise that it may go well with you, that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. Sorry, kids in the room. It's a good thing to honor and respect your parents because you're doing that. You're honoring the Lord, not just your parents. And once you leave the house, you get here on your own, you realize, man, this is such a good characteristic. This is a basic building block I need to have in my life is a healthy respect for all relationships as I go through my days. Number three, we need to respect God's standards. God's word. There's no other standard like it. Everything else in culture is going to change. But God's word doesn't change. If he says marriage is good, then marriage is good. If he says be faithful in your relationships, be faithful in relationships. Respect God's standards. And number four, simply just the idea of respecting God. We just need to let God be God and get out of his way. You or I are not in charge. I don't get to make all my decisions. I'm praying as I walk through my life, God, that I will obey you, put you first, have a healthy respect for you so that when I interact with other people, maybe in my family, maybe across the counter at a food place, maybe at a business interaction, I need to learn, I need to respect every person because every person is a child of God. Everybody, God made them. He sent his son to die for them just like he did for me. You know, believers in Christ, if we will do that, that opens the door then to be a witness for Christ. Even when we disagree with people, we can still be a witness to them and have a healthy respect for them and have a good conversation. Even if you get bad service at a restaurant, even if your kid's losing the ball game, it's okay. We still need to have a healthy respect for people on the other side because we have no idea what they're going through in their life, what their day has looked like, and God is looking at us and say, you know what? This is one building block that for when it comes to our family vision, we gotta get this one right. We've gotta teach respect. So parents and grandparents, I'm not recommending you grab them by the head and shake them. I'm recommending, though, that you do whatever is necessary to teach our children or grandchildren. This is important. God says, I want you to respect those that I put around you. Respect human authority, relationships, his standards, and God himself. You know, the good news in both of these stories about Joseph and the prodigal is that there's a happy ending. So the good news in our life, whether you've been a believer since like age seven and all your life you did the right thing or tried to do the right thing and you never went kind of hog wild crazy, that's awesome. That's actually an amazing testimony that you were able to do that. And Jesus died for you. The good news is for even those people who chose the other path, who went hog wild, made a thousand mistakes and thought, man, that can it get any worse than where I'm at? The good news is that Jesus also died for that person. And Jesus says, I invite everyone I invite all to come to the cross and experience salvation. And the good news of both stories is both of those guys were reunited with their father and both those guys have a happy ending. That's the good news of the gospel of Christ. So I don't know what path you've walked on, where you've been in your life, but I want you to know that Jesus did die for you and he loves you just as much as the next person, no matter what your experiences have been in your days. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your word. And Lord, I thank you that you created the idea of families, that within families, Lord, this is how, God, you want us to raise our children, to build the next generation, to shape a culture. And I realize that what's in our homes is going to affect what's outside of our homes. So I am thankful for grandparents and parents, Lord, who take the idea of respect serious. You know what? We're going to honor the Lord. And we're going to honor other people. The words we say and our actions And we're going to do our best to teach that in our home, that one of our visions for my family is, God, that we will be respectful of other people. Lord, I'm also thankful for the cross. I'm thankful, Jesus, that you died on that cross for all walks of life. Lord, we're not any better than anyone else. 
Lord, we know that sin has consequences and some people have experienced a lot of that. But God, at the end of the day, we're all sinners and we're all gonna stand before you. And the only thing that's gonna matter is did I know Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior? So I am thankful that you died for everyone, not just one group of people. And Lord, we need to keep that in mind as we're interacting with people as we go to lunch today and somebody takes our order. God, as we go throughout our weekend, uh, maybe most of us, some of us have the day off tomorrow and we go to a place and get to experience stuff with our families. Help us to interact with people Lord, with just a level of respect because these are all children of God and these are all valuable in your eyes and everyone should be valuable to us. So Lord, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for our families and I pray God that as a church, we'll do our best or to honor you, to show respect to other people and do our best to be a witness for Christ so that others may come and experience your forgiveness as well. So thank you, Lord, for it's your name we pray. And everybody said, amen.